sounds brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so, over to you. So there is going to be a large part of this talk that's going to be on RTI as, as well, which seems to be the, the most popular thing ah, in this okay. session. Um, so, yeah, uh, my name's Tanya. I work for the Scape Trust, uh, which is based in the University of St Andrews. Um, so the Scape Trust is a charitable organisation, I hope that says it all, um, it's a charitable organisation uh, to help research, conserve and promote archaeology threatened by coastal processes all around Scotland. So since 2000, um, Scape has run many projects that are designed to help these threatened sites with the, uh, with the help of local communities. Um, so one of the ways that Scape has been engaging with communities over the years has been filmmaking. Um, Scape has filmed all of their excavations and runs specialised projects centred on film technique and archaeology, uh, including a, a series of YouTube videos that are actually up at the moment, so that's cool. Um, so one of the most recent projects that's got a uh, sharp... Uh, God, I'm getting confused now. Scape has done, it's, it's all of these shortened things, um, is the Sharp Project, Scotland's Coastal Heritage at Risk. This is a big four-year project uh, that's designed <coughs> to, um, with two major facets in mind, really. Uh, one is an app that uh, is designed to update the Coastal Zone Assessment Survey with uh, citizen scientists all around Scotland. And the second is Shore Dig. So each of these little sharp logos is a Shore Dig project, um, really designed to uh, help the local community groups um, complete sort of uh, work on heritage assets that they value. Um, so all of these sharp, yeah, so the one I'll be speaking about is that little little glowing one. So this is Weems. Uh, Weems is located on the south coast of Fife, just across from Edinburgh. Um, the uh, coastline is home to a number of caves, and these ca caves contain Pictish carvings. It's actually the highest concentration of Pictish car carvings anywhere in the world. Uh, which I guess isn't too hard because you only find them in Scotland. But that's uh, <laughs> uh, um, as well as that, the caves ho ho host a wide range of carvings. So we've got things from abstract symbols to beasts and possibly the first representation of a boat in Scotland. Um, the caves are also home to early Christian crosses, Victorian graffiti, and slightly more modern graffiti. Um, so there has been a long-standing tradition of recording at the caves, and this is just some of the famous antiquarian scholars to record at the caves. So we've got James Young, Young Simpson, James Drummond, who first discovered that the carvings were Pictish, uh, Christian McLagan, who is the first female Scot um, archaeologist in Scotland, uh, Romney Allen, who <laughs> I've just got put interesting fact in here, but he actually um, uh, he did schematics of all the caves, which is really useful, as some of them have actually collapsed. And John Patrick, the first man to photograph carvings around the 1900s. <coughs> Ironically, we don't have a photo of him, but he is an important player. Um, so all of these... Uh, all of these people basically led to the creation of an extremely valuable record, um, which is really important at the moment because of two major threats. Oh, sorry, I've actually animated all that. That's cool. Um, okay, so East Weems uh, is, is one of many mining villages all along the Fife coastline. Uh, when the mines shut down in 1967, this, leads to, uh, this led to two major threats to the sites. First is coastal erosion. Because uh, the mining waste wasn't being dumped along the beach, Coastal erosion started taking place at a really increased, increased rate, and you're going to see that a little bit later on. The second is vandalism and antisocial behaviour. Um, so in 1986, um, this car was driven into one of the caves and set alight, causing uh, a small collapse and the loss of some major carvings. Uh, unfortunately, this antisocial behaviour is still going on today. There's Scotland's national drink there. Um, and this... Oh, there we go. This is actually, yeah, 2016, that was this year. So um, although things are getting better slightly, they're not burning cars anymore, uh, there is still, still issues there. Um, so one of the good things to come out of burning a car in a cave um, is this creation of slacks. Uh, save, the, save the Weems Ancient Cave Society, I always get that wrong, um, who were formed in October 1986 to help kind of promote the caves and educate people, educate local people and people further, further abroad on their history and importance. So um, in 2013, SWAX and SCAPE joined together for this Shoreditch project to create a di collaborative digital project. Uh, laser scans were taken um, both of the inside and outside of the caves um, with the help of uh, the York Archaeology Trust and create a lot of <coughs> laser models, uh, laser scanners. Uh, local guy as well, oh, that's uh, Marcus there doing some. Uh, that's actually part of the website. That's actually one of the models. That's the, the Dew Cave. 
Uh, this is Andy Martin, he's a local guy, and this is his hexacopter. So he took uh, aerial photos all around the coast, and we were able to create, combine that with historical um, research and create this. This is a model of the coastline. You're just going to see how far back the coast is retreating, so you get a little bit of a feeling. So we've got the Pictish times, goes into medieval, industrial, and now the modern. So you can actually just, yeah, I mean, the coast is right up to some of the cave mouths now. Um, so, in order to create the digital interactive content for the inside of the caves, we chose RTI, uh, RTI. Um, so for two major reasons. One is that volunteers can, can, can just do it. Um, it's a really good way of involving volunteers, especially in something that could be quite an isolated experience, taking photos or laser scanning. Um, uh, this is actually a very, as it's, it's actually been said before, it's a very communal activity. Um, the second, uh, all the volunteers actually did process, they, they took all the photos and they processed the entire thing. They were all the way through the project from start to finish. Um, so this is one of the carvings, it looks brilliant. Um, this is another reason why we used RTI. Uh, as you can see, when you're moving the light around, all of the details are really starting to come out. This is actually a, a what could possibly be a Pictish double disc right at the bottom, and somebody <laughs> in the past has gone and s turned it into a cannon which is, uh, I don't know why it's my favourite, it's <laughs> <laughs> terrible really. Uh, so the, uh, this is the first uh, incarnation of the website, which is actually up right now. Uh, it's just got um, information for Jonathan's cave, um, and um, uh, yeah, it's just got information for Jonathan's cave, but that is until next year, when this brand spanking new website will come out, which is lovely. Um, so as part of the launch of the new website, which is going to include RTIs and historic photos, um, local history, really, for each of the caves, we decided to make, with the community's help, um, some unique films to help illustrate the kind of rich and social history of the caves and of the area. So, after discussing with SWAX, we came up with uh, these, the, the following four films. So, for the court cave, we ended up um, being able to interview an ex-miner about a gambling game that they used to play in the caves called Miner's Toss. Um, yeah, so that's great. Uh, we, we didn't have to blur out his face because it used to be illegal. He was just like, ooh, I don't know if I should be on camera, but that's fine. Um, in the Well Cave, we did a reenactment uh, uh, re even of uh, the Hansel Monday procession, which is normally took place uh, at the beginning of January, just after Christmas. Jonathan's, Jonathan's Cave, um, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. This is the film that I will show to you at the end. And the Sliding Cave, we ended up uh, interviewing Douglas Spears <laughs> on the pics. Um, it's just a kind of a historical thing. Um, so, to the films, finally. Um, we've got pre-production stage. Uh, we ended up writing storyboards for all of the films and discussing them with the community. I keep forgetting to, <laughs> to do the thing. Um, to see if they were happy with the films, if they wanted any changes. We gave people roles. Uh, costumes were all sourced locally um, from the Kakodi players and the Bayer Theatre. Uh, we managed to get that one on eBay, which was pretty cool. And we managed to find, just before we were filming, um, this is David Ogden, and that his, is his... 1896 half plate Sanderson camera who not only he lent us but he also lent himself <laughs> which was great because I wasn't going to touch it that's way too expensive <laughs> um, so it came to filming um, so we decided to show, shoot the majority of the footage over a weekend in the middle of February uh, this year with a cast of about 15 local volunteers uh, good organisation really was key uh, we had uh, multiple projects happening over simultaneously over two or more locations um, and though none of the volunteers that, that were signed up to do any of the acting had ever acted before or, or not acted much, um, it was really the, the strength of the project really was the ties that we'd made with these people over the last few years to get them to feel comfortable and to really embrace the, the kind of what they were doing. Um, some people needed less encouragement than others to get into character though. <laughs> so... Escape has really been using filmmaking to communicate their archaeological work for a very long time um, and as such has uh, invested heavily into a wide range of really good equipment. Um, but more uh, importantly, Escape has also invested a lot of time into not only learning how to use this equipment properly, but also thinking about the theoretical uh, cinematic language behind filmmaking. Um, Everything, it's not just that we set up a camera and film whatever happens, everything is thought about and structured. There is always a reason to do something. So as we complete most of our filming on the coast in Scotland, uh, we've actually realised that good sound is probably the most important aspect for filmmaking. People will watch films that are slightly out of focus or a little bit weird, but if you, they can't hear what's going on, you will just lose their attention totally. So that's why we use 
um, a multi-channel kind of uh, external sound recorder, and then these two specialist mics. The one on the far right is an omnidirectional Lavalier mic, so it's going to pick up everything, but you normally have it close to your face, so that's great. And then for everything else, we have this giant Rode shotgun mic, which sounds way more threatening than it is. Um, <laughs> and, of course, the windsock or dead cat is incredibly important for getting out the wind noise. Um, so, back at the... <coughs> I really wish I had an anime. I, I tried to be too clever. Um, so uh, back at the, at the office, all of the clips are logged with in points, out points, keywords, uh, all the details you can. Extra dialogue was recorded. Uh, and then, we, then only then could we actually get to, to make all of the, the first of many, many, many rough cuts. Um, <laughs> then one of the programs that we did use actually uh, was to was our After Effects in order to um, help solve some problems that we had actually on the day. Um, so this is a scene from the Hands on Monday procession. When we came to film it, it was dark and it was actually snowing, which was perfect for us because this scene is supposed to take place in January in Scotland. Um, but when we came to shoot it again from a slightly different angle, the weather looked like that, which was just beautiful. Um, however, not great for us. So. In order to get it like that, and you might not be able to see it too well because of the, it, it looks better in, in real life, I'm just going to say that. Uh, we ended up darkening down the image to make it look dusky, um, put uh, a kind of filter on top to create sort of uh, snow particles. We gave them physics um, uh, to make it look like snow, and then kind of put that all across the film. It actually worked out really well. Um, so that's the After Effects program there, and there are a range of professional... Um, <coughs> tutorials online and that you can find in the library to help you do this. Um, this is, I'm an archaeologist, I didn't start out as a filmmaker, um, so these things are really useful. Um, so another thing that gets really overlooked is sound. Um, sound and background music can be an incredibly powerful tool if it's used correctly, but there's always problems with, with running into copyright issues. There are some free online music, kind of royalty-free websites that are good use, um, that, that are good to use, but again, for Hands on Monday film, we really needed someone singing. Uh, luckily for us, we got in touch with a local choir, and they, again, once, well, once again, not only um, offered us the use of their, their voices, but they also themselves. So they came to be filmed in a cave as well, um, which is actually <laughs> turning out to be quite a popular thing in Fife. Um, so this is the cast. Um, though the films are not due to be released uh, officially until next year with the website, um, these guys have already won two awards at our Sharp conference, which happened in June. And the website, um, the first incarnation of the website, won a highly commended award at the 2014 Archaeological Awards, and it was just the importance of this recording um, project and of this site was actually 29th of November this year uh, on the BBC website, so it's incredibly important and um, something that I think a lot of people are going to be looking forward to. Um, so, just to quickly wrap up before I put the film on, um, so filmmaking is not a quick or easy skill to master, especially when working with members of the public who uh, can very easily be put off by the sight of giant lens sticking, being stuck into their faces. So the Scape Trust has really spent years making links with people, with, um, with community groups, helping to foster trust and an ongoing interest for these sorts of projects, as well as learning and teaching filmmaking skills. So the result has been a number of films that both uh, us and the communities that we work with um, take immense pride in, in showing. Um, so if you'd like to see any more of the films, I can tell you what our YouTube account is, and uh, now I'm just going to be quiet and put the film on. <laughs> um.